Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is the Rise News analyst, Emmanuel Feni. Good morning. Good morning, Adesua. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Ruben. Good morning. Yeah, how was the weekend? Perfect. Yes. Fine. It was just I was indoors all through. <laughs> no movement. <laughs> well, let's start with this the newspaper. The lead story, presidential task force links Kanu deaths to COVID-19. 170 new cases moved tally to 2,558, with 400 discharged, 87 dead. NCDC seeks access to Remdesivir for treatment of patients. Speaks with NAVDAC to facilitate approval for use. Cautions against use of hydrochloroquine. Cloth mask can offer 80% protection, says U.S. study. Handlers of Abakiari's body test negative. Dangote Foundation sponsors 400 tests per day laboratory in Kano. Well, some other newspapers are also looking at the, have uh, the Kano situation on their front pages, their lead story. The Punch newspaper, 80% of Kano coronavirus samples positive Buhari's panel. Most of the strange deaths in Kano caused by COVID-19, says Guazo, while the nation newspaper PTF, coronavirus cause of mass deaths in Kano. We'll come back to this day quickly. Yes, um, I think that's official that those deaths tagged as mysterious. Mm or nothing to worry about, usual malaria, diabetes, and all that. Now, the report of that panel uh, sent there by President Mamadou Bari is out. And uh, yes, at least the interim report. They will release their final report, I think, uh, next week. But enough evidence to uh, indicate that clearly the deaths were caused by coronavirus, which brings to uh, mind the situation in Kano, where President Muhammad Obari rightly declared two weeks lockdown. But the governor, Dr. Ganduje, is singing a different tune, relaxing uh, the lockdown in the face of what is happening in Kano, which is quite uh, uh, pathetic, if you ask me, that the governor does not seem to appreciate the enormity of the situation uh, in Kano. Of the 170 new cases yesterday, Kano contributed 29. Now behind uh, Lagos in total number, as it were. Well, a lot of people <clears throat> are justifiably outraged mm -hmm. by the fact that you know, the governor uh, was talking about relaxing the uh, lockdown in Kano. Uh, given the kind of numbers that we have seen with increased testing um, at the uh, three isolation uh, in, in the three, two laboratories that they have in uh, Kano. Now, but maybe it's also at another level a problem of communication because what the governor actually said is that there will, people will be allowed to go out, I think, on Mondays and Wednesdays, mm -hmm. uh, and only two markets will be opened. And this is to allow them to... Uh, to stock up on food. Uh, I think Yandaba market, uh, where perishable products are sold, and uh, Yan Lemon uh, market, where, you know, uh, fruits mm -hmm. are sold. But the initial message that came out was that the governor was insisting that because of Ramadan, yes. then the lockdown should be uh, restricted. So maybe the communication was not properly managed. If it is to stock up on food, that model that is adopting was originally adopted also in Cardinal State. And also in uh, Ogun State, people are allowed every 48 hours to go out for a certain, uh, you know, period of the day just to uh, buy food stuff and then uh, go back to their houses. But I think... Is it know, not a matter of amending the communication because of the outrage? Well, I, well maybe, maybe that's what happened, because eventually when uh, the story was reported, there had been an amendment. Uh, so that's why I said maybe... Uh, the, the communication was not strategic enough. However, the situation in Kano is serious enough for government to, in fact, declare an emergency in Kano State. Mm -hmm. Within a period of one week, we've seen the numbers, you know, jump 
uh, from maybe 71 to 311, uh, and even more. You know, there's no guarantee that the more testing you have there, there won't be uh, more. No, and most likely, why, more. Yeah, and that's why Dr. Nasir uh, Guazo, that's the name of the leader of the presidential task force in Kano. That's why he said the people of Kano should take COVID-19 seriously. That's his own way of saying, look, they should take responsibility uh, for their own uh, survival by observing and respecting the guidelines that have been outlined. Yes. Well, I say it all the time that in times of crisis, people look forward to leadership. And leadership is beyond making speeches uh, to reassure the people. It's about action and leading from the front. And one would hope that in the situation of Kano, the governor himself is not in denial. Uh, a lot of technical and material resources are being deployed to Kano. And it will seem as if uh, the state government and the, uh, the federal government are working at cross purposes in ensuring that there's a curb of the spread in Kano state. From the inception, from the index case recorded in Kano, it's, it's been a series of unfortunate uh, combination of, of events. First, it was the so-called mysterious cases. Well, we, now we know they're not so mysterious. And when you look at the preliminary uh, investigation or the verbal autopsy that has been carried out, you see that the underlying uh, symptoms in these deaths are very similar to COVID. So I'm not surprised to see that 80 percent of those deaths are COVID-related or are COVID, as this uh, committee has said. Yes. Well, let's move on to the Nigerian Tribune and uh, come back to Lagos as banks, government offices, public transport resume today. Lagos rolls out 30 new guidelines. Nigerians worry over resumption. Somalu imposes two-week curfew. 50 Amanjeris from Kano brought to Kaduna tested positive air fire. Nasarawa assembly shot as lawmaker dies. Most Kano deaths linked to coronavirus PTF committee. Yes, uh, the new guidelines from Lagos State gov uh, Governor, and uh, that is a place uh, where uh, the health man in the state is leading from the front. Mm -hmm. And these guidelines, I hope uh, like Lagosians will adhere to these uh, guidelines. But as Ruben rightly observed this morning, a lot of buses were carrying full capacity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, not... You observe that? <laughs> yes. Not uh, respecting uh, any social distance. Well, they were thinking of their, of their uh, fare, mm. how it will affect their bottom line if they decide to do 60% capacity. But something that also struck me was that the Lagos State owned um, uh, mass transit, BRT? their buses, their BRT buses. Yes, they are observing 60 percent, mm -hmm. but they came out with a policy that no more hundred naira uh, ticket for mm -hmm. short distances. Mm -hmm. so, but you can pay 200 naira for that short distance. So if government buses are also trying to exploit the people because they are observing uh, uh, social, social distance. distance by not carrying full capacity, then what do you expect from uh, the, uh, the, 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 the other uh, private mm. transporters? Mm. They will also find a way to cut corners. And their own way of doing it is uh, by uh, overloading and loading without observing social distance. But I think we, we need to find a way to enforce that because it's no use. Yes, people are wearing masks, but it has to be wearing of masks and a combination of uh, social distance. Physical distance, in, in this case, they have to. <clears throat> well, I didn't observe uh, too many people wearing face masks this morning. So maybe government still needs to do a lot in terms of uh, public enlightenment. Uh, the Lagos State government has done a lot in that direction. But it's never, it's never so much. too much, you know, because our people, the way Nigerians are, you have to keep telling them the yes. same thing over and over again before they will even notice the message. That's the first point. The second point about pricing, I think that's a, a major thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the, a lot of people have taken advantage of uh, COVID-19 to make a quick profit. Uh, there used to be a price uh, control board. I don't know whether it still exists. Mm -hmm. But government can make sure that, look, uh, people do not exploit others at a time of crisis. Like By a certain example with BRT. Take, for example, mm -hmm. something as basic as face mask. You know, face mask used to be very cheap. Yes. Now it's, the, the price has gone 
uh, through the roof because people want to make money. Even transporters, those buses you saw this morning, you know, I was told that fares have been increased mm. just automatically like that. Everyone is trying to uh, take advantage. And I think that there must be a mechanism in place to make sure that those who run supermarkets, even when you go to some supermarkets, you know, they hold stuff and then they increase the, uh, the price. Mm. I think that, you know, uh, all of that we add to the hardship. That the people are I don't know whether you observe that the bread, the price of bread has gone up. Uh -huh. This and is what we're saying. From Everybody. 350 naira per loaf, now it's 400. Uh -huh. And they are all in unism. It's not like uh, you you get a um, normal price somewhere. Somehow so, they've just all gone up. So why we make a case for sacrifices, that everybody has to sacrifice at a time like this, you also look, need to look at what the businesses are going through. So they will burn the same amount of petrol uh, to make these trips, but with lesser uh, uh, passengers. No, so they're carrying full up. capacity. If you want them to not carry full ca capacity, who is making up the difference for them? But the price of fuel has come down. Okay. So, so that takes care of that. Well, NRC <laughs> is even saying that uh, with... Uh, with the uh, oil price going further down, that the, the uh, trans Trans price of fuel should come down. Should also further. come down. I hope. And NLC is recommending 16 naira per liter. I hope, since it's using the price of crude oil, <laughs> when it goes up, <laughs> it will also you agree. Will, yes. you will agree with well, the new. Well, isn't that what prices. the PPP? The new it? norm. Mm. Yeah, that's what the PPP. That will said. be going by. Uh, Appropriate prices. Yes. Okay. Removal of subsidies. Yes. yes. Very quickly. Yes. Well, the Guardian, let's just look at the Guardian. Mass sacking in banks averted as central bank waits in. Yes, there was actually panic around the country because uh, starting with um, um, Access Bank that no, announced. No, you don't need to mention it. No, but they announced it that mm -hmm. uh, they are. Um, but. It's a good thing that uh, the, the central bank has waded in, but I hope that will be for real, so that some banks don't still go behind and start uh, handing uh, down letters. And for those who have received letters, yeah. I don't know whether those letters will Thank be withdrawn. You, Thank you, Fanny.